my diagnosis story and basically got diagnosed with liver failure at 24 years old yeah so covering how to manage an autoimmune illness, my journey and my relationship with the Lord, and some wellness tips as a millennial and as a high school teacher. Let's dive right into it. I will be discussing in today's video my diagnosis story and basically how I got diagnosed with liver failure at 24 years old. What happened at first was I was getting a routine pap smear. No, don't judge. This was my first pap smear. I know. So I got my first pap smear at 24. And when they, you know, did their routine exams and checkups, and they noticed that I had elevated liver enzymes. And at the time, I didn't show any... I did show two signs of um, liver failure, but they weren't, like, prominent. Um, and I really had no idea. My only two symptoms at the time were bloatedness and had just an overwhelming amount of like bruising that just didn't heal. So those were my main two symptoms. So the first thing we did was we went to see a gastroenterologist and since I was having kind of some stomach issues as well, like digestive issues, the things that I was eating wasn't really sitting well. So I got some tests done there and they didn't find anything. So what ended up happening was a few weeks later, this was in September and we had seen the gastroenterologist in October. And then fast forward to like early November, I went to a gathering, a social gathering, where there was an open bar and I obviously wasn't, I over drank, you know? So at the time I was extremely hungover. I got home pretty late in the morning. It was like one of the worst hangovers like ever. In the afternoon, I had no appetite all day. I remember trying to just have like something to drink. I think it was like orange juice. And I just started throwing up and I wasn't throwing up like food, it was, blood yeah so I was throwing up like blood I threw up about three times and I was alone at the time my mom wasn't home I was living at my mom at this point she wasn't home and she came home obviously extremely like she was just terrified but obviously first things first you know she called 911 we went to the nearest hospital where I stayed for a week and that was when they were running tests you know, it was pretty weird they gave me my diagnosis at the end of the week they diagnosed me with autoimmune hepatitis which i will have a separate video of what exactly that is hepatologist came to see me there was a nutritionist that came to see me towards the end and she was like okay you need to get on a anti-inflammatory diet because just really quickly what aih is which is the abbreviation for um, autoimmune hepatitis it's basically your liver is inflamed so I have to eat foods that do not cause inflammation, which believe it or not, a lot of the foods that we consume do. It's basically just clean eating, you know, no processed foods. You're eating pretty much, I guess like a keto diet. You're high on your omega-3, so like you can have fish, you can have not too many grains. Avoid white flour completely because that is inflammatory. So again, I'll go over that in a separate video. Basically, I had to kind of just change how i was eating it was a whole really you know lifestyle flip at the time i wasn't eating so horribly i guess you could say um i had joined a crossfit gym the year before i did gain a lot of weight coming out of college I gained about 20 pounds so i was at my highest weight it was like over 200 pounds so at the time i was already like in the 180s working out more routinely i had an idea of like how to eat healthy i i kind of already was in that scope i obviously was a lot more strict right because i'm confronted with this like life-changing disease went vegan for four months um which i'll talk about again in a 
another video. Another one. After that hospital visit, was assigned a hepatologist, which is basically just the liver doctor. Starting like right off the bat, you know, I had to get a endoscopy. When I had thrown up all that blood, I had developed what is known as varices in the esophagus. The veins are like enlarged and they, um, because of the pressure that was pushing up from my liver causing me to throw up that blood, it enlarged those, um, those veins right here. Basically put bands around it. I was getting those done every three months just to check on those bandages. So along with that, I had routine MRIs done now. Um, I was getting CT scans every few months, blood work just to maintain how my liver enzymes were doing. Um, so again, this was extremely new to me. I was a, what I thought, a normal, healthy 24 year old. And then I was just like hit with like, you have a dying liver. And I didn't even mention this. So my condition also resulted in cirrhosis. So that was my full diagnosis, AIH with cirrhosis. The kinds of medications I, were, I was on, I was on prednisone, which is a type of steroids to maintain the inflammation and also lower my immune system, if that makes sense. And along with that, I was taking diuretics. So I was on about seven or eight medications, being, you know, going from zero to basically 100. Currently, I... I'm not on prednisone anymore because there is certain side effects harming to the body. So um, thankfully, I'm no longer on that. But I was on that for a full like year and change. Yeah, that was that was the the end of 2019. Managed it pretty well at first because once I started getting on medication, I actually was able to kind of like live normally still being healthy. Like I said, I did the four month, three to four month vegan journey, and I kind of like. You know, whenever you do anything cold turkey, you're gonna cheat at some point. You're gonna like go back to your old habits. It wasn't over time that I did this. So I kind of started introducing those comfort foods again, dairies and, and sweets, because I have Again, I was able to manage it well. Of course, it had its ups and downs. I was no longer able to drink. I was no longer able to have alcohol. And you know, in your 20s, that's something where you're like, okay. Then you know, I guess it hits you because it's it's a huge part of social interactions, right? And especially in our in our um, in our, <laughs> our age group. <laughs> Currently, fast forward to 2021 in December, I was placed on the you know transplant list in the summertime. I am currently looking for a liver. So yeah, guys, that is my diagnosis story. Thank you so much for listening. I also want to just end this video with saying that. I couldn't really go through this without God. I give thanks to him every day. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure to check out my next video. I will be discussing what is autoimmune hepatitis and how someone can get that. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Bless you guys all and have a great week.